I'm Steve Barsick Amstel with High Tech Design Safety. We're a third party test laboratory. We do evaluation, certification, and design reviews. And we kind of do this whole other space called um, conformity discovery process, which allows your team to discover how much they already conform and then learn what it takes to get the rest of the conformity in place. I'm going over a broad topic of product safety for your hardware and equipment. And this series is about semiconductor manufacturing equipment. This specific portion is about the second half of Semi S2 and the sections of Semi S2. The last video talked about the first 14 sections, and I'm going to cover the next 14 sections. And you're like, wow, that's a lot. Well, there are 28 sections in the standard, and our goal is to help you design these needs into your product so when it's time for certification, evaluation certification, and going to market, you're ready to go. There's not this dead time when you're trying to catch up with the certification requirements. So last time we left off with section 14, which was fire protection. The next one is process liquid heating systems. So if you're using liquid in your equipment and you're heating it, there are specific requirements there. And um, you know it may seem uh, obvious that you don't want to run your heaters dry unless they're capable of doing that. You don't want to overheat some volatile material to cause it to ignite. And there's a bunch of other um, requirements there in liquid chemical heating and baths included in that section. The next one is section 16, ergonomics. And primarily that section points to Semi S8, which is the ergonomic standard for semiconductor equipment. It deals with how operators, um, um, service and maintenance people interact with the equipment. And that standard we will cover in another section. Number 17 is hazardous energy isolation. It's your lockout tag out. How do you um, safely turn off the equipment and then prevent it from being turned back on, whether it's gases, liquids, um, pneumatics, hydraulics, if you have them, or electrical, or any other radiation generating or motion generating sources how you lock out and tag out all of that equipment and how you do that. That section is, is important, especially for documentation to provide to your end users. The next one is section 18 and it's mechanical design. It talks about designing your equipment such that um, you know, any moving parts are um, well designed so they don't break, they don't fall, um, and it gets into other um, very specific me mechanical design sections and we'll go through that in depth when we get there. Number 19 is seismic protection. So um, if you have a large piece of equipment or even a small piece of equipment in a factory and there is a seismic event, an earthquake event, the equipment can move around, topple over, fall over, um, liquid can spill out of it, gases can be released. It's all about securing the equipment to the facility and being certain that the frame of the equipment is sufficient to prevent the machine from breaking up during a seismic event. Um, very critical in these large factories. Um, it's even critical in your office spaces to have your bookcases uh, secured to the wall if you live in a seismic zone. So after seismic is section 20 which is automated material handling equipment and devices. So any of the machines that deliver wafers to your equipment and how they interface with the, uh, with the tool, the semiconductor manufacturing equipment, is going to deal with all of that. And even down to um, um, robots that travel around inside the fab, either, either overhead or on the floor. Section 20 is all about environmental considerations. Um, about exhaust and effluent and keeping liquid effluent separated, uh, about potentially recapture, reuse. There's not a lot of that in semiconductor right now. Most of the liquid chemicals are gone downstream for reuse that way. But it deals with all the env environmental conditions and considerations and looks to reduce the environmental impact of semiconductor equipment. Section 22 um, is about exhaust ventilation. 
There's a real big drive now in our industry to reduce the amount of exhaust used with equipment. That's a good plan. But also, on the other hand, if there is a release, to capture it. Um, we at High Tech Design Safety are experts in that section as well and can provide you with tracer gas testing and other testing to meet those needs. 23 talks all about the chemicals that are used in the processes, about trying to use less harmful chemicals if possible, and about communicating to the end user what chemicals the equipment is approved for and how to utilize those chemicals. Uh, section 24 is about ionizing radiation. X-rays and, and radioactive sources and those types, how they're protected and how you communicate their presence, their strength, and protective measures to your end users. Number 25 is non-ionizing radiation. So UV, um, IR, bright lights, things like that. All that non-ionizing radiation and how you manage that. And um, to be sure that there's not a injury to your operators or service people. The, the next logical extension of that is section 26, which is lasers. Uh, communicating fully what lasers are in the equipment, how you design to protect the people operating the equipment and the facility from those lasers should that be necessary. And um, it goes into depth with that. Again, here's another section that we're experts in helping you conform to, including the attendant international standards, 60825-1 for lasers, and also the U.S. requirements for the Center for Diseases and Radiological Health. Uh, number 27 is sound pressure level. Now I haven't seen a lot of this be a problem in the fab. However, some equipment is loud. Um, we do have to do a survey to see how loud the equipment is to see the, the sound pressure level, the noise level emitted from the equipment. And if it is too loud, how do we abate that and how do we take care of that in a particular way? And then 28 is about all the related documents that follow on. And there is almost a whole entire page of related documents as well. Each of those goes into more depth of the section above or gives more explanation on how to apply. So that's the outline of SIMI S2. As we go on with each section in the upcoming videos, I'll dive into each section and give you a full explanation of how each is applied, practical ways to find conformity for your equipment, and then practical ways to measure, prove, and certify to that. If you're looking to get your hardware product certified, UL listed, and CE marked, then please like and subscribe below so you can get this information every time we post a new video.